I'm here at Statler's on a Monday night, home of Singular Sensation, a fabulous uh, cabaret evening and home to many of Toronto's fine uh, musical performing artists. And I'm here with a, the three of the four founding members of Half Pint Theatre who are about to put on their very first show, Tick Tick Boom by Jonathan Larson. Welcome, ladies. Hi! Hello! And that is specifically Alana jo- uh, Stone, pardon me, Alana Stone, the director, and Tara Litvak, the musical director, and Esther Valens, uh, a, one of the performers and also a founding member slash producer slash everything. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about Half Pint Theatre. Uh, how did it get started and, and um, you know, what is your what is your objective? Well, well um, it all kind of started when I, I wanted to, to put on a show, um, specifically Tick Tick Boom, and, and I, I approached w- Alana and... We, uh, we were standing in line uh, for tickets for a Fringe show and I had just come to see Esther in, uh, in Lauren Toffin's Fringe show, uh, Miss Print, and I was Lauren being uh, the the fourth member and the producer of, of the yeah music. all right yes that's the real tie in <laughs> um, and I was kind of talking about how I wanted to get a bit more directing experience but you can't really do that if you're not an established actor or an established director and Esther was like well I want to produce Tick Tick Boom I'm like what <laughs> and and from there we just went and I was like I let's do this together I'm mm-hmm. absolutely in and kind of from there it was really full speed ahead and then the day we were applying for the rights um, MTI's application said name of your theater company and we were like oh well then we're forming a theater company and yeah. that was literally how Half Pint started we needed a letterhead with the theater company name on it <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> and then when the name came around we were like alright well what will be the name of our theater company and Oh, I was like, well, what do we have in common, Alana? And she was like, we're both tiny. They call me half pint at work. I was like, and that will work. Yeah. And how did Tara become involved? How did you become involved? Um, Esther, I was working with Esther on Into the Woods, and uh, she approached me about doing Tick, Tick, Boom, and uh, just kind of an up-in-the-air idea, and then uh, kind of just went from there, so, yeah. Amazing. Work with friends and all this. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. And we're thrilled to have her. She's kind of like really, really amazing. <laughs> yeah, we're very lucky. Thanks. <laughs> and tell me a little more about uh, Tick, Tick, Boom specifically. What's it about? What's the, the origin of the piece? I'm taking this one. Um, so Tick, Tick, Boom was originally a rock monologue performed by Jonathan Larson in the early 90s, 1990. It was written um, kind of as a backlash for, from his frustration as being a, a struggling composer in New York and not having things go anywhere and his, his really his, uh, his struggle as an artist. Um, and Tick Tick Boom kind of was formed from that and his idea was that it was going to be completely simple. No sets, no costumes, just him and a band. I figured that would be easier to produce. Unfortunately, it didn't get a record deal or a production, which was what he wanted, but a producer came to see the show and liked his work and that was how the team was formed for Rent. So everything kind of came to fruition there. But I, I love Tick, Tick, Boom because he, Jonathan Larson is such a legend about him, um, especially because of Rent and success and, and his very short life. But um, this takes a very real story, a very relatable story to pretty well every artist in Toronto, every struggling composer, actor, singer, dancer. Mm-hmm. It kind of goes across all boundaries and just really um, inspires and shows such a passion and a talent and uh, and whether you're you're willing to go for it or not and what may come in your way. Hope is a pretty common theme in, in musical theater and uh, I think there's there's no better embodiment of that in, in real life terms than John Larson's story who tragically died shortly before Rent became the smash hit that mm-hmm. it was. Mm-hmm. Has that that notion that success you know can happen, that it can be tangible. Has that informed your direction of this piece at all? I think it was always ingrained in me because I knew Rent and I knew Jonathan Larson before I knew Tick Tick Boom. Um, I was a Rent head as <laughs> many, many were in my teen years and I knew the story and I, I was introduced to Tick Tick Boom in my third year of college uh, and I loved it, loved it, loved it. So it was never a separate entity. I all, My opinions of the show had always been infused with the fact that he went on to write one of the most successful musicals in Broadway history. Mm-hmm. So it, it was always with that, that connotation in my head. Esther, how do you feel about taking on the, the role 
so to speak, of, of Jonathan Larson uh, as one of the performers in this piece. How do you also feel about sharing that role with two other amazing performers, Jeremy LaPalm and, and John Chu? I mean, they're both great. It's been such an amazing experience, and just getting to, p to play, um, I play Jonathan Larson's girlfriend in the show, Susan, and just kind of to think about the man that Jonathan Larson was, and to think about who his girlfriend was and kind of what she was going through every day and going through all the trials and tribulations and being by his side probably more than anybody every single day while he was trying to get his show to Broadway so it's kind of it's an interesting journey for her because she also wants another life she while she also wants to be a performer and she goes through that struggle she also has the struggle of I'm at this point in my life is this the time to let go and is this the time for me to pursue other things that I want in my life, such as a family and um, a life kind of away from New York? And so it's an interesting and really relatable thing, as Elena said, for any artist, because you kind of wonder, when do you let go? Mm -hmm. And do you let go of such an amazing dream that is something that so many of us are just chasing after and want so much? Yeah, th there's always a point. There's always like one point in every performer's life where you have to decide whether you're going to continue to go for how many more years or if it's time to just throw in the towel. And what's kind of cool is that the three characters um, are all have either just passed that point or are just getting to it. Mm -hmm. So it's really wonderful to work with the script where they all have that kind of same theme in common. Do you guys personally feel you've ever reach that point and, oh, and if yeah. so how, oh, did yeah. you, how did you a get past times it? Oh yeah. yeah, big time. Yeah, it happens pretty frequently. <laughs> what, what helps you get past it? Uh, just the love of it. I, I, it's, there's nothing else I can do. There's nothing else I can do but music and particularly musical theater and that's, it, I wouldn't be living my life mm -hmm. if I wasn't doing that. Mm -hmm. What life would I be living? It wouldn't be my own. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, no, I, I mean, I feel like I struggle with that every single day. I'm just like, oh, am I good enough? Am I, is my career going to go anywhere? Am I going to be doing the same thing years and years and years from now? Is that good enough for me? But in the end, it's what I love, you know? I actually took a break from the city. I, I was out east for about eight months. And it, it does have a wonderful artistic community there, but it's not like Toronto, where there's so many opportunities and the community is so wonderful and, and tight. Um, and... I just, I missed it like hell. I couldn't imagine my doing anything else with my life and my passion just grew that much more. My determination just became extreme to the point where I came back and I was like, well, I'm not holding back anymore. It was actually great because it got into the point in my head where I'm like, there's no fear anymore. Hmm. How about you, do you have any tricks? Any tricks? Helping, or any, any, what helps you get over that, over that hump? Uh, there's a First of all, a bunch of musical theater songs. I call it like my, my awesome music theater songs playlist. I need a better name for it. Um, that are full of songs that are just really relatable to the struggle of being an artist. And those songs will always kind of bring you back to a bit of a more grounded spot where I say, you know what, no, I'm here and I'm good enough to do this and I'm worthy of doing this. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of what you have to tell yourself every day because there's so many people who are going to try to put you down. So mm -hmm. you kind of have to. So some of those songs include a why in Tick Tick Boom actually, which is probably one of our favorite songs, like cast and creative across the board. Mm -hmm. It's all why? one of our favorite songs. Yeah. There's a common complaint in, in the film industry that uh, there are very few good roles for women over, you know, age 25 or 30 or whatever you want to say, but that uh, the, the life of a, um, an on-screen actor uh, of the female gender can be a, a tragically short one, uh, with a few exceptions. Um, now, in Broadway, there, there are a number of, you know, legendary performers who are still going strong well into their, you know, uh, uh, you know 50s and even 60s. Do you feel as though there's a double standard between the two industries, or, or do you feel that it, it may just be, uh, you know, that they're, they're, they're unrecognized people, or that there are just the same number of people in Broadway who have been kind of discarded because of their age? I would think that there's possibly even more people yeah. in New York that are definitely, you know... I don't think that there's enough roles that are women that are written for women in either mm -hmm. category, to and be particularly honest. for older women, I mean, for example, I mean, Next to Normal was a huge hit, and 
the star is a middle-aged woman, but the, it's so rare to come across that what you, what mm. musical theater is usually looking for is like mid twenties, um, females, and it's mostly it's it's about the parts being written and it's about the changing of the industry and what people want to see, whether they want to see real life or they want to see a more um, heightened version of reality or fantasy like. Um, and luckily, at least with contemporary music, it does gear more towards something that's a little bit more normal and uh, more older parts are um, emerging, but it's still very, very rare. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and one of the things about creating more roles for you know older people or women or whatever have you, when the work isn't there, you make your own work, and that's really how we all started, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. especially with Half Pint Theatre, particularly. Absolutely. And once you're done with Tick, Tick, Boom, what's next for Half Pint? We have some ideas. Yeah, anything you want to share? I feel like we can't announce No, that. Um, we can't, <laughs> can't announce just things? yet, but we do have something coming up for the autumn. For the autumn. Um, and I like autumn. It's just a nicer word than fall. Can, can I see this part? Yeah, I think okay. you can see that. Okay. Um, should everything work out, uh, which 90% it will, it'll end up being a Canadian premiere. Excellent. And keeping in mind, Half Pipe Theatre stands for, you know, intimate setting and uh, mm -hmm. things that really engage the on audience on a personal, small level. So that's what we're kind of always gearing for. Yeah. All right. Nice little teaser to look forward to. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for your time. Cool. Thank you. Thank you.